What's up guys, this is James Blonde with OnRPG.com. I'm excited to bring you my thoughts on a new game from Perfect World called Blacklight Retribution. The game was in closed beta for only a short period of time, so I was fortunate enough to get in and peek around. Blacklight Retribution is what I'd like to describe as a not-so-distant future first-person shooter. I say this because most of the tactical gear in the game doesn't seem too far-fetched. Anyway, when you first fire up the game, you're given several different menu options, including training and customization. I decided to check out the training, and I was for sure glad I did. It was your typical first-person shooter training tutorial, however it was quick and it delivered what I needed to know. It's much easier than trying to figure out stuff in between being slaughtered. Once in the lobby, they had 10 or so matches going on at once, and I was able to choose from different game modes, such as King of the Hill, Domination, Retrieval, which was similar to Capture the Flag, and of course Deathmatch and Team Deathmatch. So I decided to try a good old Deathmatch to start off with. The map I was playing was called Pile Driver, and it looked to be a construction site for a skyscraper in the making. I instantly fell in love with this map. There were plenty of places to get lost in when I needed to, and multiple level access runarounds. This was later to become my favorite map. For the closed beta there were only three maps, and the second one I played was called Deathlock. It looked like a police showdown in downtown Tokyo. Each map had both indoor and outdoor combat situations. And the last map was Heavy Metal, which resembled a future military vehicle depot. Okay, I have to say it. It's simple, but a really cool feature. As you play, you'll notice that as you receive that last fatal round, your character is frozen and suspended in their death position as the view switches from first person to third person, and as the battle freezes around you, the camera traces the path of the bullet back to your assassin. This effect is a win in my book because it's just one of those little add-ons that the developers add in the game that keep the blood pumping and adrenaline alive. Yeah, I was a little sad there wasn't a single keystroke for throwing a grenade, like there is for melee, but it's probably because you can have several different types of offhands like mines or combat knives. It's also nice that you can weapon zoom with right click. As for movement, you can run by holding shift, but only for a short distance. It shows how much energy you have to use towards running on the bottom left side of the screen, so at first I was keeping my eye on this, but I quickly mastered how to use it at the right times. Overall, the game had a really good feel to it. The movement was smooth, and I could really feel the power of the weapons, especially after I changed my weapon to the suppressed SMG. A really neat aspect to the game is the HRV. By pressing V, the hyper-reality visor, which when activated, briefly gives you a sort of x-ray view revealing key elements of the battlefield. The HRV allows you to see enemies' locations, enemy defense placements, heavy weapon depots, pickups, and control points. There's no minimap in the game, so it's a very crucial part of gameplay. Once the HRV is active, it only lasts about 10 minutes, so you better use it fast or wait for its cooldown. Since all the players in the game are wearing the HRV, this allows the developers to do really cool things with the EMP grenades. In this game you have EMP grenades which makes your HRV go haywire and blinds you with what looks like the Windows blue screen of death. And there's another type of grenade that puts out an AOE that shows up as an error message on your screen and this was also a really cool effect. During gameplay you earn CP points. You can earn this by getting kills, killing sprees, killing a high threat player, killing the warlord, which is the player with the most kills, and getting revenge on somebody who recently killed you. The game labels you as a high threat player if you're on a high killing spree, or if you purchase a heavy weapon at the depot. At the end of the round, the CP points you earn are converted into XP that levels you up. Your points also somehow get converted to GP, which is the in-game currency, to purchase new gear. Depot stations are located in various places around the map, and can easily be located with the HRV. The CP points you earn during battle allow you to purchase health and ammo, as well as highly effective killing tools such as a flamethrower, minigun, a railgun, a rocket launcher, an airstrike, and of course the ridiculous hard suit. Oh, and the turret that you get from the depot is a mean little bugger. The fearless hard suit gives a striking resemblance to the mech at the end of the movie District 9, and I'm pretty sure it's just as badass. In the hard suit, you're nearly invincible as you stomp around the battlefield, shredding your enemies with an inescapable chain gun on the right and a straight up cannon on the left. The hard suit has a huge jets on its back to boost from one area to the next. Oh yeah, and don't be in the way when it needs to be somewhere. Oh man, you just got crushed. Even titans can fall, so it's a good thing they added a weak point. 
On every hard suit, a randomly generated weak spot appears, but can only be seen through the HRV. Weak spot or not, good luck trying to take one of these things down. The level at which you can customize your soldier is absolutely nuts. You can customize your gear by choosing either light, standard, or heavy armor, and this determines what offhand you can carry. Although heavier gear allows more to be carried and can take a bit more damage, in return, it may deplete your energy for running quicker than that of some of the lighter suits. Some of the offhands you can carry include a variety of grenades, mines, combat knives, and a really cool breach hammer, which is highly effective. I found several notable players running around with a breach hammer clubbing everyone like baby seals. Your character carries one primary weapon like an assault rifle, an SMG or a single action rifle, and a secondary weapon which is usually some sort of pistol or in some cases a tactical shotgun. The game gives you several custom loadouts with your different weapon preferences that you can choose in between spawns but you have to unlock these as you level up or purchase at the marketplace. Characters are also able to equip different tactical packs that can help you on the battlefield such as a medical pack to heal yourself, a deployable barricade, a cloaking backpack, and even I even saw a reviving pack. I didn't get to use one of these but I saw it I only saw it once in action so I don't know how it works but it's cool nonetheless. When customizing your weapon you can change the receiver to determine what type of rifle it is, the stock and the muzzle to add a flash suppressor or silencer. You can decide what type of magazine your weapon uses to determine if you want to be able to reload faster or hold more rounds like the drum magazine. You can also choose to carry a magazine containing either toxic, explosive, or incinerator rounds that deal a lot more damage to your enemy even after you fill them with bullets. Later on I felt that this was a must have in order to gain control of the battlefield. You can even change the camo on both your suit and your weapons and later I upgraded my sights and created a better secondary weapon. There is a trophy you can equip on your soldier, a golden combat knife, but due to the shiny factor, I figured I'd go without it. I didn't see anybody else wearing it either. Now there are skills that are to be earned in the game. For example, one that increases the range of your digi grenade, or one that makes your knife combat more deadly with faster swipes. But I have a feeling there will be more added on this in the open beta. In my final thoughts, I think the game is extremely addictive. It's the kind of first person shooter that lets your Modern Warfare 3 disc collect a little dust. I was pretty bummed that I only got to experience the game in closed beta for about a day, so you can expect to see me playing Blacklight Retribution as soon as it comes out on open beta. Well that's pretty much all I have to say about the closed beta of Blacklight Retribution. If you want to learn more about the game, check out the articles and developers diaries at onrpg.com. But first, hit that like button. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers.